No one was ready for this. One day, the auto industry was locked in its endless EV turf war, fighting over charging times, battery chemistries, and who could shave a minute off a recharge. The next day, boom. BYD dropped a sledgehammer nobody saw coming. Out of thin air, they unveiled the world's first mass-market hydrogen combustion car under $30,000. This was not a futuristic sketch or a one-off concept collecting dust at an auto show, but a real production-ready machine that can go 550 miles on a single hydrogen fill, outpacing most premium EVs and even some gas sedans. The way they sprung it was pure corporate theater, no leaks, no whispers, not even a hint. Even the analysts were left standing in silence. The CEO didn't mince words. Standing on stage, he called it the final nail in the EV dominance era, sending a chill through boardrooms from California to Stuttgart. Within hours, BYD's stock price exploded, adding $6 billion in market value almost overnight. The market wasn't just reacting to a flashy headline, it was responding to a seismic shift in the economics of clean transport. When the first technical details came out, Jaws dropped further. This wasn't just a hydrogen car, it was a new breed of combustion technology. At its heart is BYD's proprietary dual-phase hydrogen injection system, a setup that squeezes 30% more efficiency out of each gram of hydrogen than previous designs. Paired with lightweight alloys that cut engine mass by 18% compared to a standard internal combustion engine, the powertrain feels less like a science project and more like a precision-engineered weapon. To solve one of hydrogen's biggest challenges, heat loss, BYD integrated a dedicated hydrogen cooling system. This keeps performance consistent even in brutal climates. Whether crawling through 110 degrees Fahrenheit Los Angeles traffic or hammering down a frozen highway in Harbin, the output doesn't fade. At the tailpipe, there is nothing but water vapor. The only smoke you'll see is the mist of evaporating H2O under the right lighting. The setup also includes a fuel cell hybrid assist, giving the driver a boost of instant electric torque during acceleration while letting the hydrogen engine do the heavy lifting at cruising speeds. For years, hydrogen cars were a luxury curiosity. The Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Nexo were engineering showcases, but with sticker prices north of $60,000, they never stood a chance in the mainstream. BYD has smashed that barrier. They didn't just build a hydrogen car, they built it at a price point that forces you to rethink the future of cars entirely. Oh. Huh. Mass production muscle. BYD is leveraging its Shenzhen and Changsha plants, factories already optimized for scale, to produce these at costs no competitor can touch. The hydrogen tanks themselves are not just repurposed tech. They've passed the latest UN crash safety standards, surviving extreme pressure tests and direct impact scenarios without compromise. Refueling takes only five minutes to go from empty to a full 550-mile tank. For anyone used to EV charging times, even on the fastest superchargers, that number is hard to ignore. The comparison is brutal for the competition. This BYD undercuts the Toyota Mirai by tens of thousands while delivering more range and faster refueling. It's cleaner than gas, faster to fill than an EV, and cheaper than any hydrogen car before it. Whether you're a weekend driver, a fleet manager, or an enthusiast, the message is the same. The rules just changed, and BYD is playing a different game. But BYD knows speed means nothing without somewhere to fill up. That's where most hydrogen dreams have died, and they're not about to let that happen. Instead of waiting for infrastructure to magically appear, they went straight to the source. They partnered with CIPC, China's state-owned energy giant, to launch 1,200 hydrogen refueling stations by 2027. These are not scattered vanity projects, but strategically placed across major corridors, making cross-province travel seamless. These aren't your average pumps, either. Each station is tied into a renewable-powered hydrogen production system. Solar farms in the south and wind fields in the north feed electrolyzers that split water into pure hydrogen, which is then stored on site. That's a massive cost cut, no long-distance tanker hauling, no middlemen. It also marks the difference between gray hydrogen made from fossil fuels and green hydrogen produced with clean energy. The result is a carbon footprint slashed by 90% before the car even hits the road. BYD also introduced hydrogen cartridges, modular, swappable tanks that can be ordered, stored, and plugged into compatible vehicles. Perfect for rural communities or fleet depots that don't have a station down the street. This signals that they're thinking beyond urban drivers and into logistics, agriculture, 
and remote industries where EV charging doesn't fit. They're starting in Guangdong, Shanghai, and Beijing, dense, high-income regions with both the demand and political push to make hydrogen work. Inside the industry, this move hit like a thunderclap. Toyota and Hyundai, the two automakers most invested in hydrogen tech before BYD, immediately called emergency board meetings. Their price point now looks like a luxury tax. European automakers are staring at a map of the EU's hydrogen station rollout and realizing they're years behind in coverage. It's not just car makers feeling the heat. Tesla has been preparing its semi for long-haul dominance where fast refueling matters most, and this tech threatens to undercut its biggest advantage in trucking. The oil industry is playing defense, lobbying regulators to slow hydrogen adoption in key markets. Even battery material suppliers are spooked. If hydrogen goes mainstream, demand for lithium, cobalt, and nickel could flatten in some vehicle segments, hitting mining and refining sectors hard. This isn't just a tech win for BYD, it's an economic masterstroke. Their vertical integration is the envy of the industry. They don't just assemble cars, they make their own batteries, motors, and now hydrogen engines in-house. That means fewer suppliers, less markup, and total control over quality and cost. BYD has already signed bulk hydrogen contracts, locking in a sub dash dollar three per kilogram price for the next five years. That's not just competitive with gasoline. In some markets, it's cheaper. Add in China's aggressive hydrogen subsidies, roughly $4,000 off the sticker for early adopters, and that $30,000 price tag makes perfect sense. They've also played the localization card by sourcing the majority of parts domestically, avoiding import tariffs that hammer foreign competitors. It's a double advantage, low production cost at home and an easy path to high-margin exports abroad. The export plan is already in motion. Southeast Asia comes first, where many countries have open trade with China and growing urban centers hungry for clean transport. Then Europe, where hydrogen is politically popular but domestically produced models are scarce. If BYD hits their timeline, shipments could start in just 18 months. For car lovers, it's a performance dream wrapped in a new fuel. For industry experts, it's a supply chain and cost-controlled triumph. And for casual drivers, it's the first time hydrogen has looked like something more than a science experiment. It's starting to look like the next big thing parked in their own driveway. BYD isn't just selling a concept on paper. They've built a machine that can walk the talk. The spec sheet is impressive, 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds, squarely in sports sedan territory, quicker than some mid-tier BMWs and on par with well-tuned gas crossovers. The top speed is capped at 118 miles per hour, a deliberate move to keep efficiency high without sacrificing highway confidence. BYD took prototypes to the frozen expanses of Inner Mongolia for deep winter trials. The result, zero cold start delay, a known Achilles heel for many hydrogen and battery systems. No sluggish warm-up, no stalling, just instant readiness even when temperatures plunged below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Torque rivals a diesel SUV on a steep incline thanks to the hybridized fuel cell assist. The hybrid system smooths delivery so well that the car is whisper quiet even at full tilt, making long drives almost surreal. On the macro scale, this single platform could shave millions of barrels off China's annual oil imports. It's not just an environmental flex, it's a geopolitical play. Every drop of imported crude replaced by green hydrogen is one less bargaining chip for oil exporters. It aligns neatly with China's carbon neutrality pledge, giving policymakers a tangible tool to push the transition forward without crippling transport or freight. If BYD's tech takes off, it tilts the balance in OPEC negotiations toward Asia. Countries that dominate oil exports suddenly face a buyer with a credible alternative. BYD's innovations in injection systems, tank safety, and hybrid integration could become a global licensing gold mine. Licensing hydrogen tech to foreign automakers could be as profitable as selling the cars themselves. For everyday drivers, the appeal goes beyond politics. It's in the day-to-day -day convenience. Forget long charging sessions. Hydrogen fueling is over in five minutes, and you're back on the road for another 550 miles. Unlike battery production, which is tied to lithium, cobalt, and nickel mining, Hydrogen power sidesteps those supply chain choke points entirely. That means fewer price spikes when a mine floods or a shipment gets caught in a trade dispute. There's also a hidden advantage in energy management. EV charging at scale strains power grids during peak hours. 
Hydrogen doesn't pull directly from the grid when you're at the pump. Instead, it can be produced and stored during off-peak times, soaking up excess solar at midday or surplus wind power at night, then dispensed whenever needed. That's a dream scenario for grid operators, a buffer that smooths the spikes and dips of clean power generation. Because hydrogen can be stored indefinitely without energy loss, BYD's platform opens the door to clean transport in regions with weak or unstable grids. Think rural Africa, remote Australian mining towns, or island nations where diesel generators currently run the show. A small-scale electrolyzer paired with solar panels can produce enough hydrogen locally to keep vehicles moving without a centralized power grid. The market's response was immediate. Within 24 hours, reservations in China blasted past 50,000 units. Interest came from every corner, especially taxi and rideshare companies, for whom a 550-mile range with 5-minute refueling is operational gold. In rural areas, farmers saw the portable hydrogen tanks as a game-changer, clean fuel stored on site without building a massive power connection. The buzz wasn't confined to China. Fleet operators from Japan and the UAE rushed in with bulk orders. In Japan, the tech fits neatly into an already hydrogen-friendly transport policy. In the UAE, hydrogen vehicles offer a clean energy badge without a total infrastructure overhaul. But reality checks set in. Outside Asia, hydrogen infrastructure is still patchy. In the US, only a handful of states have public hydrogen stations. In much of Europe, the network is concentrated in a few high-income countries. Rolling out a global fleet without matching fuel availability is like selling smartphones in cities without cell towers. High-pressure hydrogen tanks are safe in operation but require specialized checks most local mechanics aren't trained to perform. The bigger environmental picture isn't spotless, either. Globally, most hydrogen is still produced using natural gas, so-called gray hydrogen, which undermines the clean narrative. BYD's commitment to green hydrogen works in China, but in regions without renewable infrastructure, the emissions benefit can shrink. Western markets remain cautious, with lingering safety misconceptions rooted in outdated incidents. Changing public opinion takes time and education. Toyota and Hyundai aren't sitting still, both have the capacity and R&D budgets to respond quickly. If they push upgrades, BYD could find itself in a tech leapfrog race sooner than expected. But BYD is playing the long game. Their hydrogen engine architecture is scalable. Plans are already on the table for buses, long-haul trucks, and even rail locomotives, sectors where battery electric solutions face serious weight and charging limitations. Moving freight over thousands of miles without massive battery packs could make hydrogen the king of heavy transport, and BYD is angling to be first in line. The geopolitical strategy is ambitious. China is talking with African and South American governments about infrastructure partnerships, positioning hydrogen as a soft power export. Instead of selling just vehicles, BYD could package entire hydrogen ecosystems, generation, storage, and distribution as turnkey projects for developing nations. It's a win-win, these countries leapfrog fossil fuel dependency, and BYD secures decades of market loyalty. There's also a regulatory ripple effect brewing. As hydrogen becomes viable for everyday use, BYD's patents and engineering breakthroughs could shape 2030 automotive regulations in ways that favor hydrogen over purely battery electric solutions. If governments start recognizing hydrogen engines as a primary zero-emission category on par with EVs, it could open massive incentives and tax breaks for buyers. Industry analysts are framing this as the iPhone moment for hydrogen vehicles. Just as Apple redefined the smartphone, BYD has taken an existing but niche technology and packaged it in a form, price, and infrastructure plan that makes it suddenly irresistible. It may not be the first hydrogen car, but it is the first one people can realistically imagine owning. That's the shift that changes everything. From cab drivers in Beijing to policymakers in Brussels, from farmers in rural Hunan to freight operators in Dubai, this launch is forcing everyone to ask the same question. If hydrogen can finally be clean, cheap, and as convenient as gas, why stick with anything else? The answer isn't just about cars. It's about rewriting the fuel playbook for the next generation of transport.